Okay. Oh boy. Is there no? Um, is it, oh, here's a. Yeah, this. Uh, I finally got myself after 30 years a uh, another um, laser pointer, and this one actually has a sonar distance meter and an IR thermometer. And what I'm going to go through is the physics that is is essentially in the IR thermometer. Apparently, the uh, battery has cho chosen to die. So, okay, that's working. Um, yeah, yeah, let's see, how does this go? Okay, yeah, I'm really, <laughs> no, no, <laughs> um, this is going to be sort of a flyover. All of the material is on my website. In a sense, I want to go and, and um, go through things at what I, a talented teen level. Um, um, and major point all of the computations that are, that are going to be shown, all of the code is on here. Uh, Ken Iverson um, is really the father of, of APL, and he got uh, the, the title of his Turing Award lecture uh, in 1979. Uh, Turing is, is, really is a, 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 an equivalent to a Nobel in computer science. But the whole point is to be able to have a notation where you can implement the ideas of, of, um, of applied mathematics and actually have them execute and have it as succinct or more succinct than traditional notations. So here's an example that is, is really the center of things. The dot product, the inner product or dot product, is just the sum of, of it's like a, a multiplying each, each of pairs of, of uh, columns on a spreadsheet and adding them up. And in traditional notation, it looks like this. Here is in C, which is pretty equivalent to Fortran. It hasn't changed in years. But this does it for double numbers and so forth. Ken Iverson's APL, when extended that to uh, split out the operations you have, and actually in general it's F uh, dot G and so forth. In the K language, uh, which is used mainly for um, uh, high frequency trading and big data and, and financial applications. And in fact, apparently Australia uses it to monitor their high frequency trading activity. But here's the entire definition of dot, plus slash, sum across, x times y. And x and y can each be, um, uh, um, they could be a billion numbers each. Here, actually, uh, show the, how radically different it is. Here is a dot product on uh, two sets of 40,000 random numbers between 0 and 1 each. And that ends up being a rather interesting thing. Gavin Schmidt, in his TED Talk, talks about how almost as proud of how he, they still use Fortran. And I know that is commonly used. Um, and you, so you have these inscrutable million line programs. Now, real science. This is my niece's uh, electrodynamics book, which I finally got through. But one of the points is it spends the first 280 pages on electrostatics. And this Greenish book is a classic uh, by a guy named um, um, Richmeyer. And in 1928, he said ever since, the real point is to be quant, quant trumps quali qualitative. And um, so every, well, I'll leave that for you to read, but Feynman also makes this point that, that important discoveries are made by investigating the, last, the, last, the next decimal point. And one of the things is this will immediately explain 97%, all but nine, 10 degrees or so uh, of, our, of our observed 288K temperature. Um, and um, one of the things, in contrast, Michael Mann uh, hockey stick uh, thing said proof is for mathematical theorems and alcoholic beverages. It is not for science. And <laughs> that's what we're up against. Um, this is the, what motivated me to just be so bugged that I got in, into this. As a high school nerd, while uh, Gore was out learning how to convince his roommates to, uh, to uh, elect him uh, uh, class president, I was reading uh, boys' science books, and a white and a black stone sit in the desert sun. Which gets hotter? And I won't pull the audience to see what you figure, but we'll get to it in a couple of slides. 
One of the things is that well, planetary temperature is essentially a, an issue of applied physics. The method of physics is to qualitative, quantitative, quantitatively understand geometric re relations, uh, arrangements so simple they can be experimentally verified. And the one thing that can trump any politician in the world is an experiment. Now, climate science looks outward through the complexities of the atmosphere, and that's what an awful lot of this uh, uh, um, conference covers. But computation of mean temperature is really more like uh, calculating the volume of gas laws, and we'll consider just how to calculate the temperature of a, a radiantly heated opaque ball. And absolute temperature, you, you can actually talk about ratios. Here's the basic data from the invention of the steam engine until now. Uh, CO2 has gone up about 33% from about three molecules per 10,000 to four. Um, temperature, well, this is, this is the one tipping point around the freezing point of water, 273.15. Um, and actually, you can't even see, very barely see the slope here from 288 to 289. Actually, there's even uncertainty as to whether it's, 278 or, or 288 or 287, whatever. When I first moved out to Colorado from um, um, uh, Manhattan, up at 2,500 uh, meters, I, I wanted to do this experiment to see whether I was crazy in understanding Kirchhoff. So I took some, these are my model Earths, uh, some ping pong balls and uh, digital thermometers just to see whether there's a difference between an unpainted uh, ping pong ball and a black one and I happened to throw in this uh, silver one just for the heck of it, and actually that does show that there's about a degree difference. But that's the total amount of difference you get with extreme difference in, in color. Um, and here's a critical experiment, 1833, Ritchie, and this is the sort of thing that used to be used in, in class. But this shows that the black and white ball come to the same temperature. And, and fundamentally, and this is just done with hot water, fundamentally you have this arrangement of, of a white surface and a black surface, and the middle one can be turned around here and so forth, and you've got water in this U-tube here with, with uh, like a, a ball of mercury or something to go and be an indicator. Five. Okay, um, and um, essentially it's, it's a brilliant experiment that, that goes and shows that, that the heat going, you fill the middle with hot water and, and black going to white, comes to the same temperature if they were out of, uh, versus white going to black. If they were not balanced, uh, then uh, you'd get the little indicator being pushed, but it, it isn't. So that was the proof that Kirchhoff uh, based his, and, and others based their uh, um, regularized by the 1960s. Um, first thing is orbital geometry. And uh, the, the specs that really matter are the radius of the sun, um, our distance from it, and the aphelion and perihelion distance and mean distance, and then these couple of uh, 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 expressions here go and turn that into the proportion of the entire celestial sphere that the, earth, that the sun covers, and that's actually about five millionths of the total sky. So get on um, energy, you can either talk in terms of watts or, or I mean, in terms of, of density or, or uh, flux. But here, the first of the reality rules that counts, Stefan Boltzmann, around 1880, uh, showed, and this is the, the important thing, that, that the, the relationship between, between temperature and power uh, uh, is, is the T to the fourth, with a constant thrown in there that is really based on basic con constants. Uh, that combines with the square root law, uh, the, the, the inverse square law, to end up uh, being an inverse square root law for distance from the sun. And here you see Mercury, uh, Venus, Earth, and Mars are all pretty close. Um, but Venus is way up there. I mean, these are within a few percent of their Stefan Boltzmann calculated temperature. Um, and uh, one of the things is, and this was interesting, the difference between our perihelion and aphelion distance is about 3%, three and a half percent. And its square root then is about, is about uh, 1.7%, which is about 4.7% centigrade, which is much larger 
than, than what the total variation that, that's talked about in, in, uh, uh, is having happened over you know, the industrial era. And actually, um, Tom um, Weissmuller yesterday showed a graph which shows that effect. Uh, so I was very interested to see that. And talk about color, talking about the full spectrum. And um, a black body has got uh, uh, absorptivity equals emissivity. Gray body, it's less than somewhere between one and zero. Um, and here's the other last equation. This is the Planck uh, function, which was the, the crowning achievement of 19th century uh, physics. And Stefan Boltzmann is the total power. Well, here's the here. Oh, and here's all the all the. That's the total amount of uh, code that's in here. Here is is actually for 900 wavelengths. This produces 900 wavelengths. This applies it for temperature of the sun and and approximate temperature of the Earth, and. Um, you can see that the, the temperature of the sun, you know, just enormously larger, a million times larger. You go and, and scale that to the, whoa. <laughs> okay. Um, that, the, the area under those curves are equal. Uh, this just goes through uh, showing that it's a ratio. Here is, is an equilibrium temperature for deep water, an approximation. And that cuts down the energy absorbed by the sun these uh, areas under the blue curve and the red curve are still the same. Um, here are the three hypotheses of, a, of a, a flat spectrum. That makes no change, and 278 is the gray value temperature. The alarmists go and have this step function here. The Earth absorbs about 0.7, and, and, and they say it reflects, or it, it uh, radiates as a black body, and that's where you get this 255C approximation. The green curve actually matches about the, cover of the color of the Earth. Now, Venus, we get to James Hansen. It's a run, run, run away. Um, I'll skip. If we apply these, 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 comp these uh, computations to um, Venus, we go and Venus's surface is about two and a quarter times what the gray value temperature is. Anyway, you go through the, that's the, um, yeah, well, yeah. It is not possible, by an order of magnitude, for Venus to be explained as a runaway greenhouse. It is BS. But then again, is there a way to? Nothing's new. 